Hey guys, this is Henry. In today's video, I wanted to show you one of the most helpful things that I found on Toss Mobile, and that is the addition of the Squeeze Pro. So up until now, there was a version of the Squeeze. It didn't work quite as well as the one on desktop, but we've done some modifications to it. So I'd like to show you some of that in today's video, but I wanted to start off by showing you these three links. So obviously, if you're viewing this through a video, they're not going to be clickable. I will include it for you down in the uh, comment section below if you want to grab those links. If you're familiar with this, just remember that you only have to grab uh, the final six characters, right? So you can actually omit the toss.mx and just grab these uh, couple of characters. And this is really the heart of what I think makes the mobile platform useful because, you know, to go through and to just look at your charts on mobile can sometimes be, you know, not as handy as the desktop version. But if you're using these scans, it really will make a huge difference. So let's dive in and take a look at these now that you have these three imported. So if you've been using Thinkorswim for any length of time, I'm sure you're probably familiar with importing scans and charts, etc. But one thing that may be new to you is using these uh, in a way that you organize them, in this case using asterisks. So all of the additional characters, be it an ampersand or an exclamation point, or again, in this case, I'm using asterisks, really help to organize these. Because one thing I think creators get into is they'll have too many watch lists or too many scans, and then they don't really end up being as helpful as they can be. So I would encourage you to organize the three that I've given you here, um, you know, here again, using asterisks. But once we've got them imported, you see how the asterisk forces all of them into the upper part of whatever you have available. So instead of having them, uh, you know, just organized alphabetically, we now have all of the ones that we have just discussed up here at the top. And this really is what is the heart of making this scan the most helpful. So we're going to start by taking a look at this. Let's use these that are in a scan for three to five bars. And I have these organized right now uh, on daily timeframes. And now once we've got this, in the, you know, you can customize the time frame you're looking for. But now what we're looking at is, let's say Tesla, for example. And when we move over to this, you scroll down just a little bit, you'll now see a whole new, you know, essentially this subgraph where we can see that we are, you know, three to five dots into this squeeze and actually starting to see this histogram turn up right through here. So the way that I like to organize mine is essentially using only two colors for the squeeze histogram. So you notice how some of these are colored green and some are colored red. So as opposed to having the four colors for rising above zero, rising below zero, etc., I just like to think in terms of rising and falling histogram and then those that are in the actual squeeze. So you can see by bringing Tesla up here, and actually we're leaving the squeeze today, but you notice how that histogram is turning up into a green histogram bar as the squeeze exits its signal, and we now have a very nice histogram to look at that with, a nice visual, you know, to compare with our scans. From there, we can go back and, you know, take a look at what else happens to be in a squeeze. Again, all of these are currently on the daily time frame. And you can just see the idea of the compression or the moments in time where we're trading inside a range. And then as we work to exit that squeeze, we now have the visual. But again, you know, if you wanna just use these and go against your watch list, it's great to filter through and see what may be in a squeeze for whatever time frame you specify. But if you're looking for new setups, you just go into those squeeze scans and say, oh, or how about IBIT, right? I mean, Bitcoin really looks prime to me. You scroll down here just a little bit through mobile, and I have found that it's a little different on the iPhone versus the iPad, right? Obviously going to give you a little more screen real estate on the iPad, but notice here how you have those red dots that are declining through the histogram. We move into the compression phase of the squeeze, and then as we start to see those little dots turning back to green, that's the point that you want to be looking to buy these. So I really find that if you will incorporate uh, the three squeezes that I've shown you here and add those in with the Squeeze Pro, it will really give you a great edge in the markets. It'll help you find products that are set to move and then give you just that much more edge when you are on the go. And if, you know, 
If you haven't been using mobile, it is very much a big part of the future, whether you're standing in line at the grocery store or what have you, you know, being able to uh, check on the alerts that we're sending out through the chat room, evaluate your own positions for yourself and see what is squeezing, see the transition of that histogram through those various dots. It'll really help you time your squeeze trades. So I hope you guys find those helpful. If you have any questions, comments, or otherwise, please do let me know. I'd love to see you guys in the chat room.